today we're going to skin a Martin. So we have a nice Martin here. Before you skin it, just examine it. Look for signs of pitch. Anything that is out of the ordinary on it. Take a brush. Just get a nice little comb. Take any, any of the mats out. That's good. Um, just get ready. I'm going to move it over and make my initial cuts. So I use this little clip here, it acts as a third hand. So what I'm going to do is uh, make an incision from this heel across to this heel, and then from the part ways up the tail to the vent hole. I'm going to go just below the vent hole. And this will leave a little bit more pelt on the back side so you get a little bit more length. And it's all the same density so it doesn't, doesn't affect anything really on the belly side. So I just take my, my knife. Get around the heel is always the trickiest part. I'm not going too deep. Just running it up. Right to the pull the vent. Take it here, draw my imaginary line up to the heel. That's good there. So you can see it's opened up here all the way across. So I go to the base of the tail. Put my knife in, run up one side of the vent, and then go up to the other side. So there's some glands there, so careful, that's where you could get sprayed with them. But practice makes perfect, I guess. So now I just open up the, the hide, and I just kind of start pulling it apart on the belly side rolling it and freeing it from the carcass once you get one side it goes pretty good so this is a male so we'll deal with that in a little bit but as it's all freed up here now I want to free it to the other side so I can take that leg out. So I like to go to the knee, kind of bend it a bit, and just work with my thumb and push through. Now you can see it's opened up all the way across. And then go to the other side and pull it part ways up the tail. So this whole leg's freed up. I'll trim that. Go to the other side, go to the knee, bend it, and then work it off. Cut that off, go to the back side, just work it part ways up the tail, and now you can see it's, it's free all the way around. Fingers go through. Now we're ready to go to the skinning gamble. So now we got it on the gamble. And we're looking it over again. Nice and freed there. This is the, the male part. I'll show you what to do with that in a second. Uh, like I said, what I'd like to do is take the knife, go to the wrist, and up to the elbow, wrist, up to the elbow and you'll see the purpose of that in a bit now I'm at the, the tail again you can pull it part ways up or just give it a cut around it's called ringing it tail stripper many different kinds you can even do this with your fingers once you get good at it so you just put it on there so it's not you don't want to pinch it tight 
and just hold it. So what we'll do here is just put my thumb underneath to hold the, the base of the tail and slowly just pull that out. And now your tailbone's removed from the Martin. Go to the belly side and just slowly pull and you'll see where the tip pulls through there. So now basically you just give it a nice steady pull all the way down to the shoulders you get it exposed. Put your thumb in there. Pull it till the foot pops out. Same thing on the other side. Pull it till the foot pops out. Just take your knife, free that up. Take this a little higher for you. So now you're at the base of the neck, the base of the skull. You just want to pull steady until it stops again and now you expose the ears. So the ear base is here. This is a carotid artery. Careful not to cut that because it causes some bleeding and it would be messy for you to deal with after. Here's the ear as well again and there's the other carotid artery. Just take your knife straight down and you separate the ear from the, the body. Just take your knife and run around and free it all up. So on the other side, same thing, carotid artery, bit of an angle. And you just free it up. I like to give it just a kind of a squeeze it here while I do it and just freeze it up. So what you're going to come to next is the eye and the eyelid. You want to leave the eyelid on the on the leather and and leave as much of it on the leather as you can. It just makes for a better product after. So you can pinch it like this to help pull it. I'll do one one way and the other. So you just cut this here. messed up on this one so don't do this but that's not too bad where this one's just a little bit dry so the next one we'll see if we can get it all attached there just a cut here pull it and cut towards the skull And there you can see I left all the eyelid on the leather and nothing on the, the skull. So now you just kind of work it free a bit more. And one thing on the, just below the eye is always the corner of the mouth on canines, fishers, just about everything, weasels, squirrels. So you just cut that there underneath the eye, the corner of the mouth. Same thing here. And then I just work this chin free a bit. So I know I have the corner of the mouth on all animals except when you're doing taxidermy, you take the bottom lift lip off. And just cut that. Now you're free from the bottom lip. You just trim the front of the nose just by peeling it off slowly. I like to put my fingers in his mouth and then push off his nose. And then that just helps everything roll. Then you get down to the nose cartilage. Just 
break it down, see the leave a little bit, and then just trim that right off. And there you have the pelt. Now I'll put it on the board. So here we got at the table. What I like to do with my Martin boards is have them pre-marked so I know the auction house lengths and that will help me determine if I'm right, uh, right here if I know if I have to go just a little bit I might be able to get it there without overstretching the, the pelt and affecting the fur density. Uh, if you're here you're not going to make it there but if, like I said if you're there you could make it there and that could be the difference between another five ten dollars. So I'll put it on the board, uh, when I do the fleshing, I always put it on the board sideways. And that just gives you something for backing. So like I said before, you're looking for burrs and sap on the other side. So when you're doing the fleshing on all animals, it'll give you a better idea of places that you have to watch out for so you don't cut through the hide. So I like to start at the head, clean a little bit around the base of the ears, just looking for mainly the fat and greasy deposits. And uh, you'll see most of your fat build up around the base of the ears, uh, some glands here in the armpit, and then down in the stomach area. So I'm still working this off. I use a spoon. The edge is sharpened up a little bit, but nothing that's going to cut through. It's not sharp. Just, just enough to help get you underneath the hide, or the meat, sorry. But not sharp enough to cut through the hide. So I just keep working it off. Take the saddle. Once you get down to the belly area, that's where you'll find quite a bit of fat. This guy's not too bad. I like to just grab it and kind of work it up from there. And that way you're not pulling fat, grease, and blood across the edge of your pulp, which you'll have to deal with later. So now I'll flip it over and do this side here. Base the ear, free that up. So this one's a, a later caught Martin. You can tell because there's not as much fat underneath the saddle and stuff like that. They are making it through the tougher part of the, the winter. Uh, if you trap them in November, they're going to be quite a bit more fat. I'm not saying he's not healthy. I'm just saying he's he's had to deal with winter. Like I said before, just once you get to the end, and just pull it back up. Just scrapings off to the side. Now, when I board them, I'm going to want to put his back side, his tail side, where the side is that it's marked. So on the head, you want to make sure the nose is properly set centered on the, the top, your eyes are centered, your ears, front legs are on the front side and uh, just put them on the board like that and give them a little more little scrape down the center. Anything that was on the edge will be straight down the center. Same thing on the front. There you go. 
clean enough. Roll him back. Grab some tacks here. So now he's he's centered. Ears are centered. I'm gonna pet him a couple times. See where he ends up on the board without any lot of pressure. Just natural stroking. So he's pretty close to double extra large. Might be able to get there. So starting at the head, pull the hide from the front and keep pushing it down. As you roll it, just taking some of the density from the front, put it into the back where they grade it. And uh, put a pin right where you end up. One on each side. And then as you can see, as up here, but when I rolled it, I got right to the line. Little chunk there, so a little bit uh, with the, the anus there, I just trim that off. Makes it look a little bit cleaner. A couple more pins just to make sure I got a straight line here. And now I'll split the tail. So here is where we made our cut before. And there's the pocket where we pulled the tail out. Put my knife tip in. Hold the base of the tail so it's tight. And you just keep going until you feel a bit of resistant resistance and then just lift up your tail a bit. And that's opening that up nicely. And go right down to the very end with the tail. So there's no pockets. No pocket there for any juice to sit and, and, and rot. Now we'll turn the tail open. You don't need a, a whole bunch of pins. I've been experimenting with uh, some different stuff there. We'll see how it all shakes out. But the best way is to pin it. it. Takes a little bit more time. You usually get a couple there. Just to center it on the board again, center it this way, and then keep your tail straight down the center, and then I put one at the end. And I'll throw probably another four in here. So one on one side, one on the other, just to keep that open so the air can get in there. So that's the back side. So a little bit of a little bit of meat there. You can pull that off. You leave it on. It's gonna dry. It's no grease, so it'll just dry up good. So on the belly side, position my my legs. Usually one's a little bit shorter, so I go with that one, just so I can keep them pretty even, so for a better presentation. And then the other leg will match it to that. Doesn't hurt to, to trim it at all. And then I just trim them so they're straight. Put a pin on the side just to hold it a little bit better shape. So 
So here what I do is I just kind of fluff this up a bit. Put a little bit of piece of meat in there. This is where your genitals were and stuff. I just trim that off. Just makes it a little bit cleaner. Besides, not too bad. Can put another pin in here just to hold that tighter. And then on the lip up here, I'm going to trim that off. That's the bottom lip. A little piece we don't, we didn't need. I didn't want to cut it too short. I can trim it here. So I just run up and take a bit of the top lips with it to the corner of the mouth. And that's all we need there. On the front legs, what I've been using the past, I don't know, three years, and it seems to work good. And uh, hasn't affected my Martin quality at all. I've gotten a couple top locks with it. So, and it's quick and easy, quicker than using cardboard and pins. You just take the clothes pin. It seems like the wood absorbs the moisture, so that's why it doesn't, doesn't uh, rot or anything. And I just kind of pull it up, take my clothes pin, and then slide it down. And it just holds it like that, and I'll trim this short. That's basically all there is to it. And then you just take your belly board, and you, all this is is a cattail uh, stick. In the fall or right now, you can grab them. They'll all be dead and dry. Nice light. You can grab all kinds of them, and then just run it up the center. Uh, I tried it with the fat end up front. It doesn't really matter. Just enough so you got a little bit of space when you go to take it out to remove the hide. So uh, this is all done. What I'll do now is put the nose down along the floor. My floor is cooler. Uh, it seems to dry the last. Uh, last and then as I, in a couple hours or up to 10 hours, if your shop's kind of cool like mine, you can get away with it and then come turn them after that. The upper part will be nice and dry. Just the lips and stuff will be still a little bit uh, supple. You're able to turn that the other way and finish off your pelt. I'll show you that uh, in a couple hours time. I'll see you later. So it's been six hours since we uh, put these on the boards. So just getting ready to turn them. So pull out the belly stick. Take your tacks out. I always find it good practice to just run your hand down wherever you had tacks. Just make sure that they didn't pull out. Because if you did, you'd have a, the pin sticking out and when you try and pull, you, you could tear your pelt. Here's the clothes pins. Just take them off. You can see they're nice and dry. There, there's no moisture. Everything's good. So just give, grab behind the ears and give it a little tug. Slides right off. What I like to do is turn the nose right inside out and push it up to make a little pocket. I take that pocket and feed it down to the lower half of the mouth so it goes inside there. Then I take a, a belly wedge stick for a coyote and put the end right in that pocket. And then just slowly start feeding it inside out. One spot you want to watch, it's really thin in the belly. So whenever I pull it down and I'm coming to that it, to the end, I wrap my hand, just give it some more support, and then finish pulling it, and then I'll just turn the last little bit. So 
So just like that. So now the belly is just about all the way over. Take my finger and roll that last bit. And then just give the tail a pull. And it's turned outside out. What I like to use is a broomstick handle for larger stuff like fisher and uh, coyote and wolves. Works better. So now I just make sure everything's kind of turned out. So when I put on the board, it just goes on a little smoother and straighter. And I'll take the same board I had it on. Make sure it's centered at the bottom. And usually when you have it centered here, like you did, the face centers as well. I roll the ears back. You can let them dry like that, but I like to put a little tack in there just to, to hold them. Just like that. Now it shouldn't uh, shrink anymore really because it's fairly dry. But I just pull it tight again and give it a couple more taps. One at the base of the tail, and one at the end of the tail. Like that on that side, and then on this side, I just pull it straight and put a tack in each foot. Nice soft fur. Take a brush, just give it a, a little brush in case when you had it the other way it was a little matted. Belly stick back in. Then I like to dry it nose down and I give it a tap like this on the ground. And that just makes it fluff up and sets the hair. They tend to stay fluffier that way when they're in the bag. And that's the end. You can see how nice and closed the legs are. Nothing's going to be sticking out to get caught and torn when it gets drummed. I let it sit like this for another three or four days. Doesn't hurt nothing. Or until I need the board again, and then I'll put them in the fur bag and, and store them. So that's how I do my marking.